in my warped mind, the extension of the abuse with the Haldoff and the Zoloff became Linda Baker, Loretta Baker, where people like Andrea Faulkner and Michael Joseph Cooper, where Amy Jane Getz leads the way where they didn't like my marijuana smoking habit. And once I disclosed it, it kind of gave them an open door because of my Oxycontin history. Now you have to go back because I keep telling you I sold that shit. And because I sold it, they couldn't use it as a way to say I was doing drugs. But Joshua R. Williams, I thought being paid 480000 from Keith and Kim Ellison, where he did an illegal deal in district court before Judge Boylan, who retired, because again, people get tired of Keith and Kim. And just because they have, just because they have access to resources as far as money con is concerned, they shouldn't be allowed uh, to do that. So then I wanted people audited, right? Because if I don't get to examine these same very people, that's not a fair justification to me because I don't know their lifestyle. And remember now, I worked at Express Scripts for just a short time. Uh, and that one year that I worked there, I went from medication sales with catalogs to doing prior authorizations. And as I did these prior auths, I got to go through the qualifications that the insurance companies provided. And as these insurance companies wanted doctors to do specific things, not only to protect the company that's paying for it, but, but to protect the people. Um, they made sure that there was certain things that they had to do. So like when Dr. Pickett, who met me from uh, Keenan's uh, removal, when I met Dr. Pickett and I did that eval, that black man looked at me, he said first he was from California. And we went through a series of uh, meetings and uh, I said, yeah, I was still in Minneapolis district number one and I thought they owed me money. At that time, I can't remember if I had my teeth or I, I don't think I had my teeth at that time. You see, they took my teeth in 2013, so by the time I met Pickett in 2014, I didn't have my teeth, nor did I have my dentures, right? So Pickett coming from California, mind you, said that at Access, um, even though I tested normal, whatever test he gave me, average, like everybody else, he said his supervisor overrode that. And that because his supervisor overrode that, um, he couldn't call me sane or not. And then this woman went before court and said, Sharon's crazy. Uh, she needs uh, medication. And the judge said, why? And they couldn't justify it. I mean, under theory, the judge could have subpoenaed my records, seen I paid my bills. I, I was talking sane to him. I looked normal. I had lived a proper life where I had engaged with social workers on a regular basis, maintenance men, people within the uh, medical field, dental field. I had had jobs that, even though they were menial, some people that was in catalogs never got to prior authorizations. It was based on the way I spoke. So taking my teeth, all these things now came into play. I wondered if Dr. Uh, Pinto was now doing some type of payback. I didn't know if he was a doctor that was seeing men from the war whose legs were being cut off. And as their legs are being cut off for various reasons, um, he's looking at their toenails. And now he wants, you know, this medication for their toenails. And as he's doing this very deep, extensive surgery on their leg or their back or whatever, um, he, he he's getting mad at me through his nurses. You know, after a while, I had to think about all the nurses and doctors that I could have spoke to at the insurance company because that's that God complex. They would be like, what's your level of education? Who are you to ask me these questions? And I said, well, I'm a representative from the insurance company. <laughs> And they pay me good money to read these questions and pronounce these big ass words where whether or not I'm in your shoes, the question becomes, you want this medication like, you know, uh, the nitrous oxide, it's a pill for your heart if you're having a heart attack. They say don't take it if you're not having a heart attack. Well, they wanted people to get this um, medication for toenail fungus. And the insurance company just wanted you to cut the toenail. Their theory was that in a Petri dish, you could take a piece of their toenail and then do a test. And if it's this type of fungus, it's going to grow in the Petri dish. And as it grows in the Petri dish, um, 
they can give them this pill that's going to cure it from the inside, which is very harmful to people if they don't have this toenail fungus within within their body that's coming out, right? So they just wanted you to cut the toenail. And the doctors that I usually spoke to, usually if I did a survey and I thought about all the calls I went through where this question was posed to me as we had these men coming back from the war, Barack Obama, right? Barack, as we had these men coming back from the war that needed this toenail fungus peel, from wearing these boots, right? And we know they got toenail fungus. The question was, was the topicals and the care being given, right? Was these things being done? Because there's topicals first, right? Before we give them this harmful peel. So like me, I know that when I soak my feet and I pedicure them on a regular basis and I'm able to dig out certain things, the fungus that I have from, again, scrubbing the bottom of my feet were uh, the pumice stone. The pumice stone has bacteria in it, and as you, like, you know, I try and scrub it with a toothbrush every now and then, but that didn't work. So then when I would do the calluses and stuff, now I'm doing my toes and things. I had these things I had been doing to my feet since I was, like, 17, 18 years old. Like, I didn't like the crud on the bottom of my feet then, right? I'd use a butter knife then, just in the bathtub. That's why I always took... Uh, shower after I took a bath because I did, you know, like soaking remedies like toenails, bottom of my feet. I didn't want my body soaking in that. Now I gotta wash it off. So uh, be very clear when I was at this company working for these doctors or, or working for this company, when I'm speaking to these doctors, I took my job very seriously because see, these are things that me and my kids might need, like ADHD medicine, right? When you went through the criteria. You know, Amy J. Getz, my son didn't even meet the criteria. So when I said to Atley Riley, Dr. Chadwick denied my son access to a label because I refused to medicate. I said he was one of them doctors at that time, Nancy Pelosi, Elizabeth Warren, that was getting a kickback from the pharmacy company. When we allowed the pharmacy companies to now reach out to the doctor's office specifically, they were now going door to door selling drugs. They were now going door to door to sell drugs, 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 drugs. They weren't even tested under the Food and Drug Administration. Why weren't they tested? I thought it was because they told me that they did some cuts, George Bush. And as we cut the Food and Drug Administration, they were no longer doing these 10-year tests, right? And that meant that under these 10-year tests, pharmacies was now allowed to go door to door and sell medication, which again, under the EPA, Shayla's inhaler was cut and you need to try this new medicine. Right, not all companies under the EPA cut the inhaler. It was still given in the albuterol nebulizer, right? Other medications was given in the nebulizer, but we got albuterol in the nebulizer, right? Because all the kids was on albuterol, right? And if you knew how to get a prior off, because why did you switch my kids' medicine? Well, now you need to get it out of a machine. And I don't know if you qualify for the machine. Well, what do you mean? My daughter got asthma. Why are you taking her meds? You should have never took her meds. You should have just gave them to her with the motherfucking machine. Not try no new motherfucking uh, medication. Why did you try that new medication? Because some doctor seen a salesman. Remember now, I'm sitting in the lobby. And these salesmen is just going in there. They got their briefcase. They got their little bags in the, in, the, in the bag. And then they give my doctor this shit. And then they give it to us in a brown paper bag. And my doctor told me, well, when this was his mistake. And it wasn't Dr. Roram. It was one of these random people I saw. He was like, well, if I give it to you this way and you need it now, I could already tell the insurance company that you've been on it and it's working great. So now we just might as well give it to them. That means you're now your own doctor. Your liver, kidney fucked up. You got high blood pressure. What about motherfucking cancer? Oh, you got cancer? You sure you want to keep talking to me?